What is up guys? Welcome to this video. In this one, I wanted to talk about how lying ruins your life. And I'm going to be talking about valuing honesty. And honesty is one of those things that can sound extremely corny. Like you've heard it when you were really young about telling the truth. But the thing about it is that when we were really young and we were told to tell the truth, we usually did so or didn't do so out of avoidance of getting in trouble. So basically to save our own asses, we would uh, tell the truth or lie or basically act in any particular way that saves us from being perceived as a bad kid who has to be punished. <coughs> and honesty is one of those things that um, gets perceived in a lot of different ways. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about taking uh, honesty or basically using honesty as an actual principle for your life and how powerful it is and how doing the exact opposite will actually ruin your life. Uh, if what you want is to really be happy, be clear and be a self-actualized and developed human being, uh, then yes, honesty is gonna help and lying will actually be a detriment to that. Now, I wanna really point out that when I talk about honesty in this video, it has nothing to do with a moral philosophy, like telling the truth is good and lying is bad. I'm just gonna be focusing on the direct experience of what lying is. Like, what actually occurs in a person when they're lying? Just the very direct sort of experience of that. So this has nothing to do with a moral ideology or shaming people or anything like that. This has everything to do with just examining honesty and lying. So personal, relational, and collective honesty is something that needs to be developed first and foremost. Honesty is not something that you simply have because your mind just says an answer like I'm an honest man. <laughs> uh, that's kind of a load of shit because if you really say the opposite like okay in what ways am i lying in what ways am i avoiding something that i should be looking at and it's also important for me to point out what i'm really talking about when i say lying when i say lying i mean any avoidance of what is true so when you uh know something that you should be saying and you're withholding information when you're doing one thing with an underlying motivation to get something else. So a good example of that would be like uh, helping an old lady cross the street and maybe you do want to help her cross the street, but there's uh, some pretty girl over there and you want to look like a really good caring guy because you think that'll attract her. It's a sort of, there's, there's layers of intentions and motivations. And in this video, I'm pointing out how we have to be conscious of what the hell we're actually doing, because we're not, we are not conscious of what we're doing, first of all, as a species, we're very unconscious, very robotic, very mechanical, habitual, very lost, confused, unclear, very underdeveloped for the most part. We're not a very developed species. And we have to be honest as to what we're doing while we're being conscious of it, because our mind has a massive tendency to basically rationalize anything and avoid truth in order to preserve ourselves because this species uh, you can look at a, <clears throat> a guy named Donald Hoffman uh, a lot of the evolution of this species like um, you know what it took for us to survive had very little to do with truth and a lot more to do with manipulating deceiving lying so that's a very interesting thing <laughs> to really think about that um, our survival as a species doesn't really have much to do with truth and your survival as an individual and your whole self agenda might not have anything to do with truth. And um, there's a lot of consequences to that. It's not just like this abstract thing. It relates to your emotions. It's actually relates to how healthy you are as an individual. It relates to how clear you are in your life. It relates to how happy you are. It relates to how... Um, open and vulnerable and relatable you are with other people. So it really affects perception, emotions, self, it affects everything. Now, uh, 
honesty, like I said, has to be developed. And this is something that if you're starting at ground zero, you've never contemplated honesty, you've never done very sincere work into what honesty is and what's going on, uh, I would assume that you probably don't have too much of it then. Like, it's a tough pill to swallow, but I, I can't put that in a fluffy way um, that might make you feel good, and I'm in no way trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to point out that unless you've taken this on, contemplated it, become conscious of it in your direct experience, have directly sensed into feelings of dishonesty and inauthenticity, then odds are you probably don't have much honesty. Odds are there's a lot of stuff that happens that you avoid. And some of it can be very innocent, but some of it, basically all of it, any sense of avoidance of reality ultimately causes suffering. But this stuff, although it may seem innocent, like a little white lie here and a little bit of avoidance there, it's not, it's not innocent. This is stemming from deeper layers of inauthenticity and fear, ultimately, which I'll get to. So honesty is something that has to be developed. You got to really get that. It's not something that will just happen because my mind says I'm honest. That's just not the case. And in many times, being open, vulnerable, honest, this is very hard. And it might not get you accepted uh, by people. And it, it'll literally hurt, in a sense, emotionally until you get used to it. It's not, it's not really going to hurt emotionally, but there's an impulse to protect yourself. That's a better way of phrasing it. It's not that it's going to hurt emotionally, but that you have so many layers of protecting yourself that um, honesty simply is very difficult for a lot of people to do because uh, lying is a fantastic way of sort of deflecting stuff coming your way and diverting attention away from something that has to be looked at and from what's true. These sort of layers of protection and walls that we build up emotionally, mentally, instinctually, intuitively, these all come together to block out truth at basically all scales of our existence in our personal life and our emotions and our thoughts and our relationships in the collective as a society in our perception of uh, reality so this is a complicated topic actually this is not like a new agey or a moral philosophy moral ideology related thing this is like very direct in your life as to like what lying is and like what it's doing and i'm gonna have more videos on this of course because this is very complicated so personal honesty and honesty in general doesn't really exist unless you develop it it might to sort of varying degrees and but you might have very shallow degrees of it and your tendency to lie is it has a lot of momentum behind it because in many ways lying and not caring about truth actually helps us to survive and then <laughs> i'm not saying that honesty is going to get you killed but it's that our conditioning as a species is so based upon falsehood inauthenticity and a lack of honesty that to do the the opposite would be very difficult because we've invested so much into this sort of habit this sort of a uh, path of bullshit, basically. Um, basically, uh, a human's default state is basically lying and manipulating in order to get your in order to get your needs met. Um, basically, we're born, and the first thing we do as children, infants, is manipulate our parents to get our needs met. We're screaming and crying to get attention, to alter their states to get our needs met. So right off the bat, what we're doing and how we're relating is manipulation. We actually associate, you know, screaming and crying at a young age with getting our needs met, with changing people's behaviors to get our needs met. And that same pattern actually carries forward for the rest of our life until we go back and actually look at that and rewire it and realize, holy crap, I did that when I was like a month old, less than that, and it just hasn't stopped. It's like, oh my God, all these... <clears throat> little habits that continuously create suffering and inauthenticity and a lack of clarity these haven't went anywhere they've been there the whole time i've just haven't looked at them 
So the default state of a human being, for the most part, is deception, lying, unfortunately uh, manipulating. This can be va uh, rather harsh to swallow and intimidating, but um, you know, there's no real good way to put this in a sense that's going to make you feel good. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> uh, this species is very deeply deluded, very overprotective of our belief systems. And overall, we don't really value truth very much. We value our own asses. We value our own survival over truth, which doesn't mean that... Um, see, it doesn't mean that truth is going to get you killed. But it's that maybe what you're doing and how you're surviving has nothing to do with truth and is also creating suffering as a byproduct of this lack of care for what is actually real. Because the truth is that which that is real, in a sense. It's what is actually the case. It's what is. And without living in alignment with that, we're delusional. We're sick. You know, we're diseased. We have a disease, really. Uh, basically, truth, honesty, health, self-actualization all, all go together, really. So lying basically always implies being fearful. And a lack of truth always implies being fearful because there's something that exists that is actually true that we don't want to look at. We avoid it. And this avoidance mechanism, we basically perceive what is true as a threat to our existence, as a threat to ourselves. So we avoid it. And this avoidance continuously goes under our radar until we purposely notice it as it's arising in any situation and we rewire it. Meditation is a fantastic way to begin to do that. Uh, really good. Any sort of deep self-awareness practice, journaling, reading, also help you to get a better understanding. But you have to move into direct experience and really feel your feelings as you're lying. Feel how tense your body is as you're lying. Feel the underlying anxiety and worry and fear. Because why lie? You know, you're doing it to protect yourself and there's an underlying sense of fear. So lying always implies being fearful and needing to protect yourself and not being open, receptive, and vulnerable. Uh, there's nothing wrong with protecting oneself, but when it comes to our personal lies, our relational lies, our collective lies, um, this is dysfunctional, you know? Basic, basic insight, this is dysfunction. But how come we're all doing it so much? <clears throat> it's because in many cases, the way we've structured ourselves, our relationships, our society, the way we've built this up is such that truth is a threat to our way of life because we're so invested in our lies. And this is a very deep topic. I don't, I don't really want you to dismiss this as like, oh yeah, I care about truth. I want you to actually investigate the ways in which you don't care about truth. The ways in which you just seek to defend yourself and don't give a damn about truth. The ways in which that you actually cling to know about truth or care about it, but are actually uh, not about that. So a good example of that, basically falsehood in truth-telling robes. A good way to put that, or a good example, is let's say someone cooks you dinner and you hated it. And let's say it's your girlfriend, wife, Mom, father, husband, son, who cares? Who cares? Someone that you're just angry at at the time as well. They cook you dinner, you didn't like it, and you say, your ability to cook dinner sucks. I hated it, it was terrible. And you're, you're doing it in a way that implies there's a, bit of, there's a bit of truth, you didn't like it, there was some honesty, but you're doing it in a way to hurt their feelings and put yourself above them as though you're superior as though they are less than you. And if we investigate where that comes from, it's actually from feelings of inferiority, ultimately a lack of security, lack of uh, love for oneself. So in this situation, we told the truth that we didn't like the dinner, which is important, that's nice, but we did it in a way that was untruthful and was hiding some something. There was things under the surface of that that weren't getting examined. 
Like in many ways, people will be very blunt with people. Uh, and they'll, th they'll, they'll say, you know, I'm just telling the truth. But would you like to look at uh, the reasons as to why you're behaving like that and look at the dysfunctions with that, the lack of well-being uh, that is creating that? Would you like to examine that? And they'll push that away. Maybe, maybe they won't. That's a very common thing amongst humans. Um, putting others down in order to make ourselves feel better. But <laughs> we disguise a lot of that with um, being honest, being truthful when we're not. We're actually hiding something. Like I said, layers of intentions, layers of motivations. Um, there's always layers of motivations. There's always sort of underlying agendas. There can be a main agenda, which is, yeah, I want to tell this person I didn't like their dinner. But there's an underlying agenda of like, I'm mad at you. Uh, I want you to feel like shit. And I want to be superior to you. I want to be dominant in this situation to make myself feel better. Would we like to look at that and where that came from? Would we like to look at the sort of wounded aspects of ourselves that actually create that? And uh, for the most part, I don't think many people are going to be very open to that unless they really care about truth. But whatever. So now I got to talk a little bit about inauthenticity and social systems, which I'm going to have a lot of, a lot of videos on this. And as we're growing up, this is a difficult one. We are faced with the world, very mysterious, don't know what it is. And we have a very sort of, a very early insight, a very sort of, very important insight early on into our lives, which is that if we stay with other people, our chances of surviving increase. So then we start to identify with our family, with our nation, with other people, our friends. And in order to fit into these groups, we have to sacrifice, in many cases, a lot of what's authentic to us in order to adopt the beliefs and the behaviors, the ways of relating, the emotional patterns and the thought patterns of that group, which cuts us off from our own authenticity, our own truth these are all this is all truth this is all about being honest and it makes us feel like inauthentic people and not only that but we confuse that with our authentic self because this is all we've, we've been programmed into that um and then that conditioning placed self out and that conditioning is still there within each and every one of us i have been really noticing it in myself how i am inauthentic in my relationships with people um and it's a byproduct of just needing to sort of fit in when I was young in order to survive. So needing to feel a sense of safety and belongingness. And these are very deep-rooted patterns. Because we did whatever it took to fit in in order to survive as young kids. Because we were scared shitless. We were really scared. Life was scary, you know. You're just a little kid. What do you know? How do you know how to take care of yourself? You don't. You, and you know that. You intuit that you can't survive on your own. Therefore, you've got to fit in with people. And you'll do whatever it takes to do that. And you'll really fit into any situation kind of like a puzzle piece. Fitting perfectly. And then when a situation changes, you'll change yourself. And then you'll, uh, <laughs> you know, rearrange yourself as a puzzle piece to fit into that situation in order to really... Uh, ensure your survival and safety. So there's a lot of inauthenticity that comes with childhood and fitting in to uh, social systems. And we can actually view that within any social system. School, family, uh, religion, science, and whatever. Whatever organization or group of any kind, really. Manipulating yourself and uh, <laughs> others with your self-agenda and emotions. So this one's pretty big. There's a lot of times where we actually manipulate others with our anger, our sadness, with our emotions, with our thoughts, and with our intentions and self-agenda in order to get our needs met in a very uncaring and rather narcissistic way. And I classify this as lying because, once again, there's underlying agendas and there's things that are being hidden when we're manipulating other people. And this is a deep topic that um, honestly, I'm writing a book on this whole topic, this authenticity, and it, it's gonna be called authenticity, I'm, I'm pretty sure, maybe probably radical authenticity because it's really gonna go deep into how we even 
formed uh, our sense of self and the inauthentic aspects that come along with that, but whatever, <laughs> save that for later. Um, there's a lot of times where we have an agenda and another person has an agenda and they don't exactly meet eye to eye. They're in conflict. And each person is trying to push their agenda onto the other person. And they start getting angry, they start fighting. They're trying to push themselves onto the other person and dominate them in a rather manipulative way. This is manipulation. You're trying to force yourself onto them to sort of change their uh, behavior, their overall self, so that you can get your way, which is manipulation. There's a sort of altering of the other person for you to get what you want. And whenever two agendas go together and they meet without any need to rearrange things, like it's genuine, it's like, I, for example, want to buy this apple and you will sell it to me for $2. So I give you $2, you give me the apple. There's no manipulation happening there because uh, it was an agreed upon transaction. Whereas, uh, let's say you're screaming at your boyfriend because you want him to talk to you or something like that. He's been ignoring you. Or vice versa, you scream at your girlfriend, whatever. Now we're getting into a stickier situation because you have a need that has to get met. And your self agenda is something you're putting at the top of what's the top of your priorities. Okay. Getting this thing met, getting what I want is your number one priority. And then what's true eh, might be in there. It might not even be in there at all. And I would recommend being very honest about what's actually happening to you and what you want, what you need and what you're genuinely feeling in a situation like that, instead of getting angry. Cause in many cases, our anger is actually covering up what we want and what we need. We're trying to force our agenda onto people, manipulate them. And um, see, this is a really tricky topic because you have to observe this for yourself and really educate yourself on this one. Like this is a deep one. In many cases, the way that we go about getting our own personal needs met are deeply, deeply rooted in manipulation. A perfect book to read on this would be The Evolution of Desire, Strategies of Human Mating. Fantastic book. Also, The Book of Not Knowing by Peter Ralston. Fantastic books. Um, but in many cases, when we are trying to force our self-agenda and what we want onto other people, we are not being open and honest about what our wants and needs are, what we're feeling uh, under the surface. We're just getting angry and forcing ourselves onto people. We're getting aggressive. And this aggression is actually covering all of that up. Because our emotions aren't a very sort of, our thoughts and emotions are very dishonest uh, if we don't value being truthful. Our natural state is dishonesty and manipulation. Um, so this is, real, this is really deep. Um, but in many ways, what we do in relationship to other people uh, is just loaded with our own personal shit. <laughs> There's no other way to say that. It's just loaded with us wanting to get something, grab hold of them, never let them go, even if they want to go. <laughs> it's just like a controlling, manipulating, lying, deceiving, hidden agendas. A lot of it's just loaded with garbage. So yeah, hidden motivations and layers of motivations and intentions. That's really important. You have to keep that in mind. Like, honestly, when you have an intention to do something, like question, like, what are four underlying motivations and intentions happening here? So um, even simple things, just to get the hang of it, I'm going to the store. Why are you going to the store? To the, buy food. Um, I want to eat. I want to eat with people. I want to feed my family. Uh, or maybe, you know, uh, I, want, I, I don't know, I want to talk to people as well. I want to see people and socialize at, at the grocery store as well. Who knows? You know, just anything, get, get the hang of it for basic things. Like I want this, but why do I want this? What's the, see, what's the want behind the want? What's the, what's the intention behind the intention? And then <laughs> get that there's at many times, like three, four, maybe even five layers of intention, uh, intentions happening there. Like, why do you want to eat? So I can feel good. So I can put food in my stomach so I can survive. So I can eat with my family and we have a great time. Here's already a few, few things going on just from eating dinner. Same thing happens in relationships. When there's heated arguments, you'll find that there's a lot of shit uh, that you're hiding. And I call that lying. 
I, I classify that as lying and a lack of awareness and honesty and inauthentic. I classify that as inauthentic behavior, as manipulation, because that's what it is when you begin to observe it in real time. There's stuff happening that you don't want to look at, that you don't want to say, that need to be said. If what you want is an honest, effective communication and relationship. But other than that, that's it for this video. Any questions at all, comment down below. But thank you guys for watching. Take it easy.